Welcome to the DC Daily Drop, your one-stop shop for today's important news in DC movies, TV, and comics. Here are your hosts, Tom and Zach. Welcome to a Thursday, November 10th edition of the DC Daily Drop. I'm Tom. And I'm Zach. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Harry Potter. In honor of Fantastic Beasts <laughs> coming out uh, next week, actually, uh, we're both big Harry Potter fans, but we wanted to talk about the DC Comics character that is very similar to Harry Potter, named Timothy Hunter. Um, this is one of those cool things about DC Comics. Anybody that's popular in popular culture has probably, there's probably an almost identical character <laughs> in DC <laughs> Comics history somewhere. Um, Timothy Hunter obviously isn't as well known as Harry Potter, but there are some striking similarities. Uh, before we get into it, I know DC Comics has been ripped off a ton, like character-wise, like characters have just been ripped off i don't think this is one of those cases but it's surprising how many similarities there are yeah uh first off just the way they look if you just look up a picture of timothy hunter you might like huh that's kind of a weird drawing of harry potter yeah where's harry potter's uh, scar that's the only thing right. you would think when you looked at it <laughs> he's got dark hair he's got glasses uh he's kind of skinny and scrawny like harry potter is in the books he is also a 12-year-old kid, whereas, you know, in the beginning of Harry Potter, he's 11. So I can't really tell a 12-year-old and 11-year-old apart. They kind of look the same to me. Um, they're both from England. So we're, we're kind of getting out of looks now. <laughs> um, uh, but they're both from England. They, uh, they both have this great destiny that they discover that they actually possess magical powers that they had no idea existed. They didn't even know that magic existed until they found that out. Yeah, they're just normal they, little boys who find out they have this great magical destiny. You could call them the chosen one if you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> they both have a pet, Al, who is kind of magic and just hangs out with them. And, you know, it's there for them and protects them if need be. Um, there's other magical be beings like the trolls and basilisks that get featured in storylines, but those are like those are anything any that magic. deals with magic, right? Yeah, that's not specific to these two characters. Anything that's magical will have those elements. Yeah. So, but if you went up to somebody and said, "Who is the famous twelve year? Who is the famous young English kid with dark hair and glasses who knows magic and has an <laughs> owl?" I'd say most people would not say Timothy Hunter, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's just kind of funny that all of those things, they have all those things in common. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit. We both read the, it's called the Books of Magic. This was where Timothy Hunter was first introduced um, by writer Neil Gaiman and artist John Bolton. Neil Gaiman, of course, famous for Sandman and some other things. Some of the best mystical type of DC and Vertigo comics. <clears throat> and when this came out, it was... It wasn't Vertigo, was it? Like, they didn't have their own Vertigo thing? I can't remember. No. It was. It came out in DC Comics. So there was an original four-issue miniseries. I think they called it DC Vertigo at the time. And then yeah. four years later, Vertigo launched in 93. And in 94, they came out with like a regular series with Timothy Hunter called The Books of Magic. That was a, a continuing story. So we just, we're just going to talk about the first four issues today that were done by Neil Gaiman. What this book is, is basically an introduction to really the Justice League Dark Team and all of the magical characters in DC Comics. Yeah, it's a great, uh, it's a really great kind of story that, you know, introduces you to all these characters. Kind of like, it reminded me of Hush. So like, if you hadn't read Batman in a while, if you go back and read Hush, it has a kind of, you get to cover a ton of characters in a short period of time and you get to see a lot of um, Batman history without going back and reading all of these storylines. And this is kind of a great way to get introduced to, like you said, all of these uh, magical characters in the DC universe Yeah, it's very without reading their own respective storylines. From a Harry Potter perspective, it's almost like the first book or the first movie when Harry is getting taken around with Hagrid at the beginning and he's going, you know, yeah. and he learns all these backstories about the magical world that he knew nothing about. But yeah. that's all this book is. <laughs> so there's yeah. not a lot of plot there. It's basically just a tour and an excuse for the readers to get reintroduced to all these magical characters. And it's a lot darker and deeper than the first Harry Potter book because, you know, the first Harry Potter book was for kids and this is probably not for kids. Right. Yeah, this is definitely a more serious <laughs> uh, look. It's not 
to adult, but I, I don't think it's necessarily for kids. You know, there's not adult yeah. language or graphic violence. There's not really any action of any kind for the most part, but it is, excuse more, a little adult. Yeah. Uh, so we get to, I won't really walk through all of the books because it, like you said, it's kind of the same thing that happens. They're basically just showing him around and introducing him to characters, but we get to meet like Dr. Call Constantine, Mr. E, um, the Dark Walker, who's also maybe the Phantom Stranger. Uh, he's a he's a pretty interesting character in this. Yeah, so they that's kind of how it starts with... We'll get into a little bit of spoilers, although, like we said, there's not a whole lot of story to this. Essentially, Constantine and these others know that this kid has a great destiny. Timothy Hunter's just chilling around on his skateboard, which he's... Uh, oh, he's also lost his mother. We didn't mention that in the Harry Potter comparisons, but he's yeah. without a mother. He does have a dad, though. Um, but so that he has this great destiny, but he knows nothing about it. And so Constantine and the others want to show him around and sort of see if he wants to be involved with magic. They tell him if he chooses it, he will see magic. But the world as he knows it, the scientific world will no longer, he'll never be able to see that again. Yeah. And they kind of go on like this trippy time travel um, ver- journey where they see all of these kind of great magicians throughout time. So they go back to like prehistoric times. They like see the world as it's inhabited by demons. And then they, you know, go to Egyptians, go to, they see Merlin, they hang out with, uh, you know, Dr. Fate, Zatara, Zatanna. Um, that's Sargon the Sorcerer. That's really the highlight for me is getting to see Constantine, Dr. Occult, De- Dr. Fate, and Zatara and his daughter Zatanna. Those, that's the coolest thing, you know, just getting a brief glimpse into sort of these characters. I think if you want to figure out more about what the Justice League Dark or Dark Universe movie could be, this would actually be a pretty good read for that. Mm-hmm. It's definitely very, very strange. Um, gets pretty philosophical at some point. So <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. So it's, and then I, essentially, yeah, I re- he's yeah. shown the beginning of time and later spoilers in book four, he's shown the end of time. Yeah. And I don't really know why, but that's supposed to make him want to choose, you know, why he has to choose magic. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of uh, really creative artwork that they do use to show all this stuff. So like when they're in different time periods, they'll use, um, that style of art from that time period or that culture and a font that looks like the writing from that culture. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. It's sort of, how would you describe the art? Like sort of an, it's kind of like, it's like oil paintings kind of for the most part. That's, that's and like, so that's what it looks like to me. That's not really my preferred style, but it's not bad yeah. art. It's just, it doesn't look like the more modern and cleaner, I guess. Crisper. Yeah. I really, really like this style. So I can, I'll look at it more and you can not look at it. You can look at it. That's fine. (laughs) Uh, So, and then, so that's the, like the majority of the whole story throughout the whole thing. Um, The book two is Constantine taking Timothy to New York city and meeting him, showing him more people. So they meet Madame Xanadu. uh, They meet the specter, the current Dr. Fate at that time, Baron winter, Jason blood is hanging out with him. Uh, they go to Zatanna's and hang out with her for a while and they get to go to like a nightclub with a whole bunch of people. It's just all magicians. And then, right. Uh, Tala, Tanarek, Felix Faust, the wizard are all there. Um, and Boston brand throughout this whole story keeps popping up and he, he's dead man. If you haven't ever read any of those stories. Yeah. So he, he keeps popping up to just talk to Timothy. Yeah. It's kind of funny. He just pops up at random moments whenever he's alone. He, he has to, yeah. it's weird. He has to tell Timothy something, but we don't know what. Uh, so towards the end of the book too, people start to attack Timothy because there's also a, a price on his head. Uh, there's like a shady organization that wants him dead because he is sort of the chosen one, has magic abilities that could do harm to them. Yeah. So his destiny is to be the most powerful wizard of all time, but they don't know if that's going to be on the good side or on the bad side. And so dark forces sort of want to stop him and the good forces are hoping to turn him into a good wizard, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. So what'd you think of this comic book overall? Uh, I really like, like I said, I, I love the artwork. Um, and it's really, it's really interesting and, you know, a lot different than a lot of other comic books that you've read before. And I did almost no research 
before going into this. All the research I've done is after reading this. And so I had no idea what I was really getting myself into. And I was expecting kind of like just a, a cheesy, like, here's a kid wizard, like Prez, the teenage president. <laughs> um, but it was not that at all. It's very, it's very deep, very serious. Um, and kind of, it's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I didn't think the plot was anything spectacular. It just was an excuse to meet all of these characters. Having said that, it was really cool to see all the characters and Constantine in particular was a lot of fun. He's just a fun character. I personally Mm -hmm. like him. So that's always more interesting whenever he's involved. So, yeah, I just think it's interesting that Timothy Hunter, nobody has hardly ever heard of him. (laughs) And yet Harry Potter is so popular. Uh, Well, like we said, there's similarities with the characters, but in terms of story, there's almost no similarities as far as what JK Rowling did with Harry Potter um, what's interesting about Harry Potter is Harry and all the supporting characters in that whole world he's set in. So, I mean, that's a completely unique book to that, but there, it's just striking how similar these characters are. Yeah. And of course, after uh, Harry Potter became popular, uh, DC made, <laughs> made some attempts to sort of piggyback off that success. Like they, I think it was starting in two, early 2000s, they released a book series that was based off these comics. But it was essentially like a young adult book series. There were six books. So it was like really trying to piggyback off of the Harry Potter sales success. And there was also uh, one time in the comics where it was Timothy's brother had some spell on him. So it looked like Tim. But he was he got a note to go to a platform between uh, at King's Cross between platforms nine and ten. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) And he, he asked the ticket guy, you know, how do I how do I get here? There's like one panel of that. You can find it online, but it's just really funny how they tried to take advantage of those similarities. Yeah. (laughs) But there's not, other than the books of magic and a couple other things, there hasn't been much Tim Hunter lately. He was briefly in the new 52 in the, in the justice league dark comic. He was a little bit older than he is here and he'd sort of given up on magic. Um, Mm -hmm. but they brought him back into the fold. So I think it's interesting before Warner brothers got the rights to Harry Potter, they were actually working on a books of magic movie. Yeah. So they wanted to, that would have been. they wanted to, um, they never got the script right. So the movie never came about. Would you have liked to have seen a books of magic movie? After reading this series? Yeah, I would, I would love to see um, a movie based on this. I think it would be really, it would, they'd have to get like a really unique director to make it, to make it work. But I would love to see something like that. Yeah, I would. I'd, and honest, I'm like disappointed that there's not more Tim, hunter stuff because i i really like this like i would read this as an ongoing series if there's more more stuff about him there is quite a bit more in the the books of magic the 94 series there was also he had a solo series it was called hunter something i don't remember it now um so there is more to read but this is sort of what he's most known for yeah but yeah i don't think we'll see a a books of magic movie per se just because with harry potter having been done it would be cool mm-hmm. if they introduced Tim Hunter in the Justice League Dark Dark Universe movie, but even then, I don't know that they'll do that because it would invite too many comparisons. Right? Yeah, I think it would just be too confusing. I I don't. I highly doubt that they'll do that. I would be shocked. I would love to see more from him, but I, I just don't think we'll have it. But for people who want to see Harry Potter comics, this is about the closest you'll ever get, most likely. Yeah, they should just change him to be like a blonde haired kid without glasses from australia and then just continue his storyline so nobody can be like oh that kid is like harry potter (laughs) i guess they should all right well anything else you want to say about tim hunter no i'm just uh i really enjoyed this uh this little series so i'm probably gonna check out some more tim hunter stuff i'm assuming that none of it is quite the same as this it's probably not as good but i'll see right this was the only four issues that neil gaiman wrote so after that they had different writers working on it so all right well that's all we've got for today we'll be back again with news tomorrow thanks for listening and make sure to check out dc daily drop on twitter facebook and dcdailydrop.com drop by tomorrow for more dc news